Beginning in the 1930s, Japan envisioned a bold and groundbreaking idea, a massive undersea tunnel stretching 128 kilometers to connect it with South Korea. This extraordinary project promised to transform regional trade, revolutionize transportation, and bring two nations closer than ever before. But here's the catch, it's still just an idea decades later. Why has this $170 billion project faced so many delays? Is it the engineering challenges, the political tensions, or something even more unexpected? Could this tunnel be a bridge to a new future, or is it destined to remain a fantasy? Hello everyone, today we're diving into one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in history, the Korea-Japan Tunnel. <laughs> There's a lot to love about this colossal plan, but one key challenge has us asking, is this mega project fact or fantasy? Stick around and I'll show you why this tunnel could change everything or fade into obscurity. Let's jump in. The idea of building a tunnel to link Japan and South Korea is far from new. In fact, it dates back to 1917 when Kuniaki Koiso, a Japanese army officer, first proposed the bold vision. The concept wasn't just about connecting two countries. It was about solidifying Japan's position as a global power by linking it to mainland Asia. By the late 1930s, the dream had grown with plans for a transcontinental railway that would stretch all the way to Europe. During World War II, Japan actively pursued this project, conducting geological surveys and even drilling test bores on Tsushima Island. The ambition? To create a seamless link between Japan, Korea, and the vast Asian continent. However, the tides of war turned and Japan faced resource shortages, shifting priorities to defending its home islands. By 1943, the project was shelved, its grand vision left to gather dust as a relic of wartime ambition. But as history has shown, bold ideas rarely fade away completely. Over the decades, the concept resurfaced time and again, fueled by advancements in technology and shifting geopolitical landscapes. For Japan, the tunnel is a tantalizing opportunity. Imagine a direct rail link connecting Tokyo to Europe via South Korea and the Trans-Siberian Railway. That would mean faster shipping times, reduced costs, and a massive boost in trade and tourism. Japan, an island nation heavily reliant on maritime shipping, would gain a strategic edge with a fixed link to the mainland. It's not just about economics, it's about cementing Japan's place as a hub of global connectivity. But here's the twist. This project isn't just about what's beneath the sea, it's also about what lies above it. The history between Japan and South Korea is fraught with tension. Centuries of conflict, colonization, and unresolved historical grievances have created a fragile relationship. While some see this tunnel as a potential symbol of reconciliation, others worry it could reignite debates over sovereignty and control. Could such a bold infrastructure project bring these nations closer together, or would it deepen existing divides? Adding to the complexity is the shadow of North Korea. A tunnel linking Japan and South Korea would bypass the North entirely, potentially isolating the already reclusive nation further. Some argue it could provoke Pyongyang, making the tunnel a target for political or military threats. Others see it as an opportunity to encourage regional cooperation, but the risks cannot be ignored. With so much riding on this mega project, it's not just a question of if, but how. What routes could be taken? What engineering marvels would be required to overcome the challenges of building a tunnel 147 kilometers beneath one of the world's busiest shipping lanes? <laughs> Let's start by looking at the suggested routes. Picture the Korean peninsula on a map. If you move south to Busan, one of South Korea's largest cities and a major shipping hub, you'd find yourself at the proposed starting point. From there, three main routes have been proposed to connect Busan to Karatsu, a city in Saga Prefecture, Japan, through the Korean Strait. But it's not a simple straight line. These routes include strategic stops on Tsushima and Iki Islands, tiny landmasses nestled in the strait which play a critical role in breaking up the long underwater journey. The first route, Plan A, would connect Busan to Goje Island, then to Tsushima's southern tip, and finally to Karatsu. It spans about 209 kilometers with nearly 145 kilometers underwater. Plan B shifts slightly, taking the connection from Goje to Tsushima's northern region, 
before reaching Karatsu, making the total length 217 kilometers. Plan C, however, skips Goje Island altogether and connects Busan directly to Karatsu through Tsushima. This route is the longest at 231 kilometers, but it reduces the underwater section to 128 kilometers. Each route has its pros and cons. The shorter underwater segments in Plan C mean lower construction risks, but the overall distance adds to the cost. Plan B offers a balance, while Plan A prioritizes connectivity to existing infrastructure. Engineers have debated these routes for decades, weighing factors like construction feasibility, costs, and demand. Recent updates have fine-tuned these plans, with options now including advanced tunneling technologies to minimize disruptions and costs. So, how would a tunnel like this even be built? If you're imagining a few giant machines carving through the Earth, think again. The Korea-Japan Tunnel is a feat of engineering that demands a blend of precision, innovation, and resilience to tackle the challenges of one of the world's busiest and deepest maritime straits. The first major hurdle? The Korean Strait itself. With depths reaching to 230 meters, this isn't just a shallow seabed. It's a dynamic environment shaped by seismic activity and complex geological formations. Engineers propose using an advanced method called the Two Water Shield Tunnel Boring Machine, TBM. These machines are built specifically for high pressure underwater conditions and can excavate through sediment layers while ensuring structural stability. Guided by AI mapping and topographic surveys, the TBMs are designed to adapt to the unpredictable geological conditions of the strait, like navigating around fault lines and avoiding any risk of collapse. But digging the tunnel is just one part of the challenge. Safety is another part. Unlike mountain tunnels, underwater structures face unique threats, especially from earthquakes and water intrusion. To counter these, the tunnel would incorporate earthquake-resistant designs. The walls would be lined with specially formulated fire-resistant concrete, which not only absorbs seismic shocks, but also prevents leaks and minimizes heat transfer by 40% compared to conventional materials. This ensures durability in the face of seismic activity and protects the structure from the corrosive effects of salt water. Another critical element is ventilation and emergency systems. Underwater tunnels like this one demand state-of-the-art safety features. Engineers plan to install ventilation systems capable of handling emergencies, ensuring constant airflow and reducing the risk of smoke accumulation during a fire. Emergency exits would be strategically located along the tunnel, offering safe evacuation points. And thanks to real-time monitoring powered by artificial intelligence, operators could detect structural stress, water leaks, or even minor tremors long before they become a problem. Let's put this into perspective by comparing it to the Channel Tunnel between England and France. At 50 kilometers long, with 38 kilometers underwater, it's a marvel in its own right, but the Korea-Japan Tunnel would dwarf it. Stretching up to 147 kilometers, this would be nearly three times the length of the Channel Tunnel. Now, imagine the logistics of this tunnel. At full capacity, it's expected to handle millions of tons of cargo and thousands of passengers annually. Engineers envision rest stops on Tsushima Island equipped with everything from fuel stations to emergency care, while high-speed rail lines promise to shave hours off traditional travel times. This isn't just a tunnel, it's a gateway to an entirely interconnected East Asia. The vision goes far beyond moving people and goods. Proponents see this tunnel as a bridge, figuratively and literally, towards uniting two nations with a complex shared history. Japan envisions the tunnel as a step toward its dream of an international highway project, connecting Tokyo to London. High-speed rail systems running beneath the Korea Strait would integrate seamlessly with Europe's sprawling network. Imagine boarding a train in Tokyo and arriving in Paris without ever stepping on a plane. But there's more than just economic and logistical appeal. Supporters argue that this mega-project could promote peace in the region, fostering collaboration between nations often at odds. With shared resources and responsibilities, Japan and South Korea could lead an East Asian community united by trade and innovation. Of course, there are massive hurdles. Construction costs are projected to range from $60 billion to $170 billion, and political tensions remain a significant obstacle. Many in South Korea view the project skeptically, fearing economic dominance by Japan. 
Meanwhile, environmentalists raise concerns about the tunnel's impact on marine ecosystems. Yet, with advancements in construction technology and a shared vision for prosperity, proponents believe these challenges are worth tackling. The question now is, can this dream become a reality? Will we see a tunnel that reshapes not only the landscape, but also the relationships in East Asia? Time will tell. Before you go, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Would you travel through this tunnel? And if you enjoyed this dive into the world's most ambitious infrastructure, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more incredible stories.